Hello people, how are you doing? I hope you're having a fantastic damn Friday. Um, yeah, we will be going over ways that you can help replicate and recreate Gary O'Neill's 343 system, of course, at Wolverhampton Wanderers in the game FC24. If you do enjoy this video, please, as always, subscribe, like, share, uh, hit the bell notification, that would be fantastic, but we are going to go through this right here, right now. So with the formation going forward, there are no major changes apart from the fact that I did make the two natural wingers slightly more narrow, getting them nice and close to the striker, and what this will do is make them as inverted wingers, if not inside forwards. Of course, you do have your left and your uh, right wide midfielders that will be bombing on acting as fullbacks at the same time. So you don't need to worry about too much width in the team because they will be supplying that going forward. But again, it is one goalkeeper, three centre backs, two central midfielders, two wide midfielders, two wingers, and one striker. So for the tactics going forward, I think the best tactical vision that replicates what Gary O'Neill tries to reproduce on the field is counter-attack. Now they do have a natural structured formation with a back three and of course two holding midfielders in front of them, but they can look to try and soak up pressure and then hit on the break, spring those um, offensive traps that they do look to try and set in transition with the likes of Neto or Cunha or Huang He Chan or whoever's in your front line, they will look to try and get them out running into the green grass space that is more times not left um, in behind with the, the, the opposition's defense. So counter-attack is the best opportunity going forward for this team. It's also the most realistic, of course. For the defensive style, I've gone with drop back and that is a natural fit with the counter-attacking system, making sure that your team is very rigid and structured at the back, making sure that there's no marauding players of your own on, on the defensive side of things out of position, making sure it's very easy for the opposition to try and open up. It's going to be very rigid, very structured, compact at the back, making sure that it's not easy for the opposition to try and play through the lines, to try and whip, to whip balls into the, the box with crosses and trying to score goals. It's going to be very hard for the opposition to try and break down this team with their offense. The team width is set to 25, a very compact unit at the back. And also essentially what this does is it does help hone in those wider midfielders and almost create them as a fullback approach where they will look to try and stop any balls from those wide areas being fired into the box. Of course, it also does create a nice compact um, defensive three in terms of your sense back. So it's going to be very hard to try and sneak um, an attacking player in between one of those guys to try and you know score a goal so you want to try and keep it as compact at the back as possible and in terms of your midfield they'll also be nice and compact making sure it's very hard to play through the center of the park as for the team depth it is set to 35 and of course this is a low block making sure it's very difficult to get those runners in behind and try and spring counter attacks of your own of course Wolves will look to try and soak up as much pressure with that deep line and then try and hit on the break so more times than not, they, they're going to say, we're sitting right here and it's up to you to try and break us down. And more times than not, the, the opposition find it very hard to do so. For the builder player, I've gone with long ball as well as for, uh, forward runs for chance creation. Again, this goes very well with counter-attacking um, or the counter-attack tactical vision um, as you want to try and get your, your three forwards in behind the opposition's defense and have that long ball fired into them, either with a, a Max Kilman ball over the top or a Mario Lamina. Either way that they can, they will try and get those runners in behind. Of course, you can also look to try and counter-attack from corners and free kicks. You are very lethal with that, especially if it's the, uh, the opposition's corner free kick, of course. Um, you can look to try and quickly transition and attack uh, from back to front. For the width, I've set it to 70. And what this does is it helps get your uh, wing backs slash your, your wide midfielders. They will also be very much involved in the attacking play going forward. And it essentially does fit your, your two wingers as well as your two wide midfielders into the attacking outlets and, and it shapes up quite nicely you could say trying to whip in those balls supply your forwards with those crosses so either your winger or your wide midfielder can do that um, as for players in the box i have set it to three and what this does is more times than not your front three will look to try and operate in that attacking third with your wide midfielders looking to try and supply crosses but what's so nice and effective with this lineup and this rotation is they do look sometimes interchange so sometimes your fullback will be in the box, other times it will be your winger in the box. So it does work out quite well, but more times than not, you want at least three players in and around there, as well as three players outside of the area. As for corners and free kicks, as for always, it is set to four. So we'll start off with the instructions for the goalkeeper going forward. I have them set to balance for both instructions. I think it best suits what Jose Saar is, essentially. You, you don't need him to be a sweeper keeper. You've got you playing a very low block as things stand. So you don't need him running out of his box. You've got three capable ball playing center backs that will look to more or less try and recover the ball in time. And then as for a saving on crosses, we have seen time and again, he can be very capable of collating that aerial ball and making sure that he's alleviating the stress on the background. Or sometimes 
he just gets caught in the air and he muddles it up more times than not. Um, so that's why I've gone with a balanced approach for it because, again, he can have games where he's very good and then other times he can have games where uh, an opposition player collides with him, very much like the Newcastle game. And yes, it might be a foul or it might not be a foul. It's a gray area. But more times than not, he should claim that ball and not drop it. Um, so I think a balanced approach does best suits and replicates what he is in real life. Moving on into our back line, we've got the likes of Gomez, Dawson and Kilman. All of them are set to their base set of instructions. Again, you don't want them doing too much. You don't want them rewarding forward. I know sometimes the likes of Gomez does get forward if they are playing their back four system. But more times than not, with this rigid back five slash back three system, you don't really need your sense back stepping out or getting forward and being involved in the build-up play. So moving on into our midfield, we've got the likes of Mario, Lamina, as well as Gomez. They are also very effective box-to-box -box players, but can also be very effective shields for this backline, and they do a very good job nonetheless. So we'll start off with Lamina. He's said to stay back while attacking, as well as stay on the edge of the box, so he can look to try and recycle possession in and around the opposition's half if need be, or he can look to try and, you know, take a shot from distance. Aggressive interceptions are set to be on. This is your engine room. This is your workhorse. Lamina and Gomez are going to work extensively and very hard to try and win that ball back when it is in the center of the park. Cover the wing and then of course stick to position. Moving on to Gomez, he's got the same set of instructions as well. Stay back while attacking, stay on the edge of the box. Aggressive interceptions are set to be on. Cover the wing and then of course stick to position. Moving out wide to Semedo, as well as Aitam Nori, they've got the same set of instructions. So both of them are set to their chance creation being set to balanced. And this does help create a, a nice tactical dynamic approach where you can either have them wide hugging the touch lines and then whipping in those crosses for your forward line or potentially have them inverts but will be a bit more involved in the builder play more centrally and also allow them to get into the box for those crosses interchanging positions at times with your wingers. The support runs, I've set it to get in behind. You do want them having that ability to get in behind the opposition's defense, latching onto those long walls that are fired in over the top and then potentially supplying the forwards with a cross or a cutback opportunity to try and score. For supports on crosses, I've gone with a balanced crossing run. And again, this does help with the ability for to have them interchanging with your wingers. Sometimes them taking up that natural position in the attacking third. Other times having them on the outside of the box whipping in those crosses. The interceptions are set to aggressive as well as the positioning freedom I've set it to stick to position. As you can see here for Aiton Nori, he's got the same set of instructions, balance width, gets in behind, balance crossing runs, aggressive interceptions, and then of course stick to position. Moving on into our front line, the attacking outfits of this side going forward, Huang He Chan, he is set to come back on defense, always looking to try and drop into the midfield, link up play quite effectively, potentially get onto the ball and then drive forward with it. Transcreation I've set to balance, and this does help with the interchanging play with your wide midfielders. Getting in behind is essential for the counter attack. You want him to try and run to that green grass in behind the opposition's defense. Aggressive interceptions are set to be on, as well as getting into the box for those crosses. Moving on to the right hand side, we've got the likes of Pedro Neto. He has got the same set of instructions as Huang He Chan, except for the fact that for the chance creation, you want him to be able to chop inside, cut in on that left foot of his, and then whip in shots and potentially score more goals or potentially try and create for others. And then finally, we've got our striker, Cunha, and a very different role for him. Not an out-and-out -out center forward. You could say he does like to drop deep, drop into those little pockets of space, collect the ball, get onto the ball quite early, and then drive up the opposition, or potentially vacate that central area to try and open up a bit more space, either for a Huang He Chan or potentially a Neto to try and function in. So in order to do that, for the support runs, I've gone with a balanced width, so having giving him the ability to either drift into those wider channels or potentially stay a bit more central and latch onto those crosses. His attacking runs, I've set to false nine. Like I said, he does like to drop off quite effectively, getting onto the ball quite early, quite deep, and then having the ability to turn and run at the opposition's defense. Aggressive interceptions are set to be on your front line, your front three essentially, will try and aggressively press the opposition's goalkeeper or their back line and try and win that ball nice and high up the field. But more times than not, if they are bypassed, they will try and look to drop into their shape quite effectively. For the defensive support, I've attempted to come back on defense, and this goes hand in hand with the ability that he has to drop deep, getting onto the ball quite effectively, as well as the ability to try and pull the opposition's, maybe one of their sense backs out of position, opening up some space for either your, your left or your right midfielder slash winger to try and get into. So yes, my dudes, that is my version of Gary O'Neill's 3-4-3 formation with balls. If you have enjoyed this video, hit that like button. If you aren't subscribed to the channel just yet and you would like to, please feel free, it's free of charge. And of course, until the next time, I hope you have a damn great day. I'm out.